Okay, we'll pretend like nothing's gone wrong and everything is perfect because we just started recording. I want to welcome you for uh, <clears throat> to the ninth uh, workshop that I have done. And this started off as a dare from Judy Galloway, who said, why don't you do a meeting? I did a meeting and uh, realized that what I did in that meeting was gave too much information and just washed over everybody and it, it kind of disintegrated uh, as, as time went on. So I decided to try and do this in small chunks. So we have talked about uh, developing chapter vocabulary and identifying features and benefits. Uh, we've talked about uh, marketing in general. Uh, we've talked about a whole bunch of stuff, uh, but the one element that I had gotten to the point where I was really nervous about uh, was actual advertising. That is part of the marketing. Uh, that's mar that's part of marketing. It's not the biggest part. The biggest part is is your uh, product, your price, your place. Advertising it takes fourth place in the t uh, in the in the four P's, and basically, uh, it's not called advertising. It's called promotion, but it's basically where everybody heads. Uh, in my experience, uh, people jump to advertising before they get an understanding of their product. And I worked with clients for 20 or 30 some odd years. And uh, I worked with clients and they never understood their product. They never knew, understood who purchased their product. They really hadn't thought about it. Somebody told them you have to get your name out there, which is a phrase that I absolutely hate. Uh, so they knew they had to advertise, but they had, didn't have kind of an understanding of how to do it. And so I started sharing with them stuff that I learned in a seminar. <laughs> and you guys are, are stuck to watch the seminar information. <laughs> so, but before we start, uh, I wanna go around the room real quick and have you uh, identify yourself and your chapter and what position you have and, uh, and tell me one really good thing that the chapter has done in the last six months. And we'll start, I'll have to call you by name because everybody's in a different order. Uh, Ron, could you add your uh, chapter name to your, to your name? And Noah, the same thing, it didn't, didn't happen. So we're gonna start here and Jean, uh, we'll start with you and I'll call out your name and then you go through the rest of the introduction. Okay, hi, I'm Jean St. Germain. I'm with uh, West Sound Chorus. That's the Kitsap County chapter. Um, currently the secretary and chorus manager and kind of all around do stuff. Um, the, uh, we just recently lost our, our PR and uh, marketing guy. He moved to, uh, this is Tony Jones, moved to um, Nashville area. So I wanted to find out more about that. And uh, I guess the thing in our chapter's done recently, probably saw, I think it was in the green sheet, um, that uh, we had one of our guys got really excited about doing polecats and we started our own polecat type program for West Sound Chorus with songs that are in our regular repertoire plus some of the polecat songs and uh, came up with our own little pin that Mike Menefee's uh, son helped design. It's made off of the dime from the the year that the BHS was founded. Very good, very good. Let's go to Edwin. The Bellevue chapter, uh, Northwest Sound Men's Chorus, Northwest Mix. Uh, one of the greatest, uh, one, one and other thing that uh, uh, was exciting was having both chapters in our, in our spring show, uh, both choruses in the chapter, uh, uh, you know, participate, put on a, uh, uh, a big show, uh, both chat, uh, choruses sing on different nights. So it was nice to have everybody together, singing together and doing arrangements together. So it was a great, great thing. Terrific. Uh, let's go to Rich Juan de Fuca. Hi, I'm Rich Wyatt. I'm the secretary of the Juan de Fuca Harmony, the Juan de Fuca chapter. Uh, let's see, what have we done lately? Uh, I guess what we're doing right now is getting ready for a Veterans Day uh, festivities thing that we do on November 11th. Uh, we always do that in part with the Squim High School and Port Angeles High School choirs and the Grand, the Grand Olympics Chorus, which is a women's barbershop group that's here in town. 
So we're getting to it ready to do that on November 11th. Terrific. Well, and also we've changed our name. We used to be the Olympic Peninsula Men's Chorus. And now we're Wanda Fuqua Harmony and we're uh, a mixed chorus. Very good, very good. Jeff, you're up from Bridgetown Sound. Jeff Wells, Bridgetown Sound, Portland Metro chapter. What have we done recently? We've stayed together. I guess that's the best thing we've done lately. We lost our director uh, after International. And we do have a distinction at International. We got to sing our second song twice on stage at International because the video wasn't working right. And the stage manager marched back out and said, you guys deserve to have a, a full video. So we sang our second song twice on the International stage. I would say that's something pretty good. That, that's <laughs> something I don't know what it, what it means, but it's uh, pr not many people have done that. I don't think. Yeah, uh, let's move to Sid. Uh, hello, Sid Brown, the president of the Boise Chordsman. Um, I'll let Dennis talk about what we've been doing because he's responsible for most of it. So I don't want to steal any of his thunder. He's our marketing director. But other than that, we have uh, as a chapter been doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. We were kind of in a real rebuilding mode last fall. Well, probably since last summer, you know, Idaho was a little more relaxed than the rest of the Northwest and Canada as far as uh, protocols. So we were able to meet probably sooner than most. But uh, overall, we're going to have probably about 30 guys on stage at district. So we're happy about that. And uh, overall, we probably have about 40 members total. And so we're, we're, we're doing pretty well, uh, considering we'd like to have more, of course, as we all would. But we're, we're fairly stable, as we think. But I'll let Dennis take the rest of it. Okay, and Dennis, you're up next. Cool, <laughs> thank you. And one thing Sid should mention about the members we're bringing in, our average age is going down. Yeah. Kind of nice, it's, yeah. It went from like 102 to like, like maybe 48 now. So, but what we've done recently, I'm the marketing guy and I also write all the grants, <clears throat> but we just completed our, our three-day uh, youth festival last, last week. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in the Morrison Center. And we had about 620, 630 kids for those three days. So we did pretty good with it. It's, we're typically up around eight or 900. So we're doing some rebuilding. Uh, when you skip three grades, you lose all the kids that were there when they were sophomores and juniors, you know, so. And, um, but we did well. Um, the grant covered all our costs for that. So we were happy with that. And then we had our annual show on last Saturday night and uh, in Morrison Center as well. And uh, we had a good attendance. We had 375 tickets that were used. And, and uh, so it was a pretty good audience for us. So that's what we've been doing lately. Terrific. Um, Ron, you're up. Hi, um, I don't, I don't, I'm also uh, from Juan de Fuca Harmony, and I'm the chapter president, and um, I don't have much to add to uh, Rich's comments other than that um, we still have 10 strong core members, and we're about to um, get more aggressive on marketing and advertising, and hope that this will help. I hope so, too. And uh, Noah, you're up. Hey there, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, good. Uh, I'm also from West Sound Choir um, here in Bremerton. I'm relatively uh, pretty new to the choir myself. I just joined this year, but uh, from what I understand, COVID knocked out a lot of the choir. And we had our, uh, our first in-person concert this year, uh, annual concert, which brought in um, some more uh, more new people so we're growing back to what we uh what the choir used to be so i think that's good very cool uh my name is greg for those of you that don't know me i'm uh, depending upon how you look at it i'm a i'm a 19 year member of the barbershop harmony society however two of those you have to take away because i was not a paid member i was just singing and uh and then uh when they when they changed uh the the pay ahead to pay as you go. I lost a year there. So I think officially I'm at about seven, 17 years, I think. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, I've been here for a long time. Uh, my background is uh, advertising. I sold advertising for uh, and was in, 
involved in marketing for 41 years in broadcast radio and uh, worked in the Tri-Cities and worked in Longview and worked in Forks and worked in Seattle and I've worked all over the place. And we lived in the Tri-Cities for 25 years, which means I'm living proof that if you if you live in Longview for, or live in Tri-Cities for 25 years, you can work for every radio station in town because I did. Uh, and um, this meeting, I have to admit, uh, has been a real bugaboo for me. Um, advertising can be really, really, really complicated if you try and figure out what makes it work and, and stuff like that. And barbershoppers traditionally don't have enough money to go out and really do a whole lot of stuff. And uh, advertising is part paid advertising and partnerships and advertising becomes very important. Uh, but I was trying to figure out how I'm going to explain this. So uh, last week, I started on a PowerPoint and I wrote a narration and recorded the narration and put the PowerPoint together and took a look at it and said, okay, so we have just made advertising uh, uh, 231. Uh, it just, uh, it, it, compl it was so complicated that I didn't understand it and I did it. So I um, redid that PowerPoint and technically it just fell apart. So last night or yesterday morning at 4 a.m. I got up and redid and uh, redid a PowerPoint to try and explain this. Now it runs about five minutes and 59 seconds. So just shy of six minutes. Uh, I sent you, and I hope you have it. I sent you kind of a, a sheet for taking notes. The information will wash over you very rapidly, but because we are so few, we'll have an opportunity to answer questions and discuss ideas and that type of thing. Uh, there's three elements that I wanna go through tonight and uh, time is pressing. But one is uh, the, the basic understanding of advertising. The other thing is how to ideas to stretch your dollars so that you get more impact and, and, and more out of your money uh, than just walking into a radio station and saying, how much does it cost to buy or walking to a TV station and say, what's, what's your cheapest rate, which is not the way to approach advertising. And the third element I have is promotional advertising. Uh, Joe Ha was supposed to be with us tonight. He had something come up. So we pre-recorded uh, something from Joe and he will go over some of the points. Uh, Harmony Kings have been really uh, very successful in raising money uh, for auctions. Uh, the last one, they raised 10 grand, uh, which was split with Jet Cities, uh, which is the uh, SAI uh, chapter. Uh, and uh, they split it and they, so they each got five grand. And the auctions have become part of it. But the other part that's interesting about the auction is that it sends you out into the community, drumming up, drumming up help and inviting people to come. And these are events, not just for barbershoppers, but this is events for the community. So that's where I, uh, play, uh, I intend to go. And what I'm going to do is attempt to show you this here video. And uh, okay, are you seeing something on your screen? Because it's not indicating that I'm sharing. Oh, I, that's because I'm not sharing. And share sound. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up into, into full view, but this is basically just let's talk about advertising and this coincides with the paperwork that I sent you. And then on the other side, we'll talk about it. So here we, crossing fingers, here we go. It may seem odd that this story begins in the mid 1960s, but the understanding of basic principles of advertising began there in earnest. Businesses had been advertising for years, but an organization called CTW accidentally hit the nail on the head. CTW commissioned a study to determine how children K through first grade learn. They discovered that humans use three basic learning styles. Companies use their advertising to educate and encourage new customers to use their product and to remind existing customers to purchase again. Thanks to the Children's Television Workshop and Sesame Street, 
advertisers had a roadmap to make their advertising more successful. CTW identified space repetition, rhythm and rhyme, and oral and visual learning. Space repetition. As barbershoppers, we understand the concept of space repetition, even if we don't realize it. This learning style means that we try something or study something. We walk away from it to create space. Then we come back and repeat the activity. Each time you returned, you found the activity a little easier. That's space repetition. Advertisers use space repetition in their scheduling because they're teaching you about their product in the hopes that you will buy it. Rhythm and rhyme. Many people learn their times tables by using rhythm and rhyme. Eight times eight fell on the floor and when I picked it up, it was 64. Millions of people can sing the ABCs, but can't recite them. Melody is also a part of this style. Visual and oral learners. Visual learners do not respond as well to verbal messages. Oral learners do not respond as well to written messages. Most people use a combination of all three learning styles. Take a moment to think about your learning style when you're learning a new song for chorus. Remember, the goal of advertising is to inform, persuade, and remind. To reach people with their message, advertisers use a technique called reach and frequency. Reach is the number of people that will see or hear your message one time. Frequency is the number of times you need to repeat your message to ensure that one person hears your message three times. Three and seven are important numbers to keep in mind. When a person hears a message three times, they make one of three decisions. If you have a strong call to action, within the next four times a person hears or sees your message, they will act on their decision. So the ideal number of times to reach a person is that magic number seven. A moment ago, I mentioned one of three decisions. When we hear or see a message three times, we make a decision. Yes, I need the product, I'll buy the product, I'll get it right now. Or no, I don't need the product, I'll never need the product, I'll never buy the product. Or maybe I need the product, but not right now. I'll file it for future reference. As you can see, you are advertising for yeses and maybes because you can't do anything about the no. Understanding basic learning styles and the concept of reach and frequency, it's time to take a look at media. Select the media that best matches your customer. Consider your customer's profile, age, gender, income, presence of children under the age of 12, household size, education, and occupation. It's helpful to create a picture of the customer you have and the customer you want. Your goal is to understand your customer and what advertising outlets they prefer. Older folks might prefer print. Boomers might prefer radio and television. And young folks may find everything online. Match your target user with their preferred media. One additional thing to take into consideration, households with children under the age of 12 affects the household's spendable income. Now that you know your customer profile and you have your message ready, Let's take a quick look at media in general. Radio has limited reach, but it's usually less expensive, so you can afford to buy frequency. Television has tremendous reach, but is usually more expensive, so it costs more to buy frequency. Print varies by type and target demographic. However, newsprint continues to increase in price as circulation continues to decline. Internet has tremendous reach and frequency and is usually inexpensive. With internet, you must carefully place your ads to the target demographic. Of course, you need to have a message, so keep this in mind as you develop your message. It must be clear, must be concise, must be consistent, must be compelling, must be true, must include a call to action, must be well thought out. I'd like to share with you the fable of the three merchants in a strip mall. They were very competitive. Since their stores were all in a row, the first merchant decided to drum up more business by advertising his grand opening. The third merchant realized that he didn't have as many customers in his store, so he advertised 50% off every day. This increased his store traffic. The second merchant spent a few days thinking about this onslaught of advertising and then decided how he would increase 
his store traffic. So your message must be well thought out. So, any comments, or did I scare you? Uh, well done, Greg. Okay, obviously there's got to be some questions, and you can all open your mics and just speak up. I don't have anybody that's that's monitoring what's going on, so give me your give me your thoughts, and we'll uh, we'll dive into it. Are you going to go slide by slide? Uh, I could. I have the piece of paper. If you want to ask it on a particular slide, maybe I can embellish. Uh, I'll go to the slides and Papa come up with a question. Thanks. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Is anybody using radio at all? Okay. So, so Boise is. Okay. Um, of the three medias, uh, it, internet, I mean, let's negate print right now, uh, but internet, uh, television, and uh, radio, where do you think you could get the most bang for your buck? I think internet for us, at least it's been our experience, whether Facebook ads or uh, constant contact. Yeah, um, there, there's some certain things that you need to understand about all of them. Uh, internet, for instance, is basically you, you need to try and figure out how to calculate and get to the people uh, that are interested in, in the product. They're, they've got to be interested in the music or the singing or there's, there's something that they, need, uh, that they need and you need to uh, target. Targeting is a little bit more difficult in social media because you are reaching people that are outside of your market that uh, couldn't possibly come. They may be interested in your event when you post the event. That doesn't mean it's gonna be, excuse the expression, a butt in a seat. Uh, and also in regards to that too, this, this advertising stuff also works for recruiting. So if you're looking for, for members, if you wanna go out. Uh, so uh, internet is definitely the inexpensive way and it reaches a whole bunch of people all at once but it is really hard to target a geographic location. Uh, I had experience with that with a radio station that we were, uh, uh, we were streaming our audio and our programming. And uh, I started getting people calling in for contests that were in Cleveland uh, and I was in Walla Walla, Washington and people calling in for contests. So we actually started running to try and target some of the out of town things. We actually ran internet only contesting and we sent, uh, we sent CDs all over the country, uh, but that didn't help us in local ratings. That didn't help us in, in local audience, but it was really cool to think that somebody in, in Florida was listening to our little radio station in Walla Walla, Washington. Uh, radio is, uh, is local. They are usually concerned about their local, uh, local thing. Now in the bigger cities, uh, in Seattle, they're not quite as, as friendly as that. The smaller the market, the more the radio station is tuned into its community. But radio stations, you can, you can create partnerships with them. And we're gonna talk a, a little bit about that later, but you create a, a, park, a partnership with a radio station and, uh, and you can get more mileage out of your dollars. And we'll talk about that. Um, the uh, television is really difficult to, to maneuver. Um, radio will produce a commercial for you and they will not charge you for that. That's part of the, that's part of the deal. Uh, television usually charges a, a production fee. So when you're, you're not just buying the advertising, you're not just buying the, the time, you are also, uh, you're also buying the, uh, uh, the, pr the production equipment. Now, obviously, if you show up with a commercial all done that uh, some of your folks have done, you avoid that production charge. And so now you're, now you're dealing with just purchasing the airtime. Um, but the, the thing that you need to understand in terms of advertising 
is that, and it really did start with Sesame Street in 1966. Uh, they learned, they taught, they studied how children learn. And guess what? As adults, we continue learning the same way. Uh, and uh, I pose the question, think about when you learn a song. For me, I learn a song visually because I'm looking at the music. I learn it orally because I'm singing along with a, with a uh, uh, learning track. I uh, step away from it for a long time. Well, in my case, yeah, a couple of hours. <laughs> And then I come back and I and I try it again. And each time the song gets a little bit easier. So I use it and and because music is rhythm and rhyme, we are utilizing everything that Sesame Street said people use to, to learn. We're losing, using space repetition. I did the song, I walked away, I created space, and I came back and worked on the song again. It has rhythm and rhyme because most of the song lyrics have rhymes in there someplace, and all of the songs have some kind of lyric, whether it be a ballad or a, an up-tempo tune. And, uh, and so see, I've covered rhythm and rhyme and space repetition. And what was the third one? Oral and visual. Oral and visual. So we as barbershoppers kind of take it for granted, but that's exactly the way that advertising works. It's, it's you give your announcement, you create space, the announcement is repeated, and uh, then you, if you're using rhythm and rhyme, it'd be great if the, if the uh, chapter had its own jingle. And surely some of our chapters could figure out how to do that because we do tags all the time. So you could even take a tag and re, uh, repurpose the lyrics and make it something specific for your chapter, which would, would make you stand out. Uh, all of this costs money, and that, of course, is uh, the big bugaboo. Uh, I was the marketing person for uh, Federal Way Harmony Kings for three years, and it took me two years to finally get them to give me $1,000. My total annual budget was was 500 Wow. So I had to figure out all kinds of different ways uh, to stretch $500. So basically, all I could do was... Pick, pick one. This year, we're going to try and shore up and advertise for singing Valentine's. I'm sorry about the annual show. That'll have to be next year because you guys only gave me $500. Uh, and that is an issue, but there are some ways to address some of that. And um, so uh, Jeff's busy working on slides. Did you come up with, did you come up with one, Jeff? Well, I was on the slide you were talking about there just a minute ago. The space, rhythm, and oral slide. Okay. All right. So I'm um, going to follow along with those slides and ask a question when it pops out to me. Thanks. Okay. Well, then I'll go through the slides again. Um, it's, it's important to understand the purpose of advertising. Most of us think that the purpose of advertising is to get our name out there. But in reality, the purpose of advertising is to inform customers, to persuade must, uh, customers, and to remind them that you exist. Uh, two separate kinds of advertising campaigns. Most of what we do is we're advertising an event. We have a show coming up and we're going to advertise. How soon do we advertise? Where do we advertise? How do we advertise? Uh, do we have any money to put into advertising and how are we going to drum up business to get into our into our event? And so in purchasing advertising, if you are dealing with uh, if you're dealing with an event, uh, you, you don't want to be much more than two weeks out. If you get too far out, people will go, hope that that's three weeks away. I don't I don't know what I'm going to be doing then. I, I, the same thing happens when a member of the court of my quartet comes and says, we've got it. We have a gig uh, in May of next year. Are you available? <laughs> I don't know. I think so. Maybe, you know, but uh, so if you get too far out, then people will put it on, on the back burner and never get back to it. And you have exhausted all of the advertising money that you had uh, telling them too soon on something they couldn't make a decision on. 
Uh, so two weeks is about the right amount. And each radio station, television station, uh, and print outlet will, will have their own theories on how to do that. But two weeks is, is about right because you're trying to inform people. The other form of advertising is maintenance advertising, which none of us can afford. But maintenance advertising is maintenance advertising is a constant reminder. We're here. We're here. We rehearse on Tuesdays. Every night is guest night. Come on over and join us and stuff like that. And that's, that's basically a year-long commitment to do that. And most radio stations can't handle, uh, can't handle that kind of, or excuse me, most chapters can't handle that kind of, that kind of commitment. Uh, talked about reach and frequency. Reach and frequency is just that, the number of people that I reach one time with my message and uh, the number of times I need to repeat my message to uh, have them actually pay attention to it. I'll, I'll tell you a story. And by the way, this is open mic tonight. So uh, if anybody wants to just jump in, because I can keep talking all night, I just want to make sure I'm connecting and you're getting the information you need. But I, at one time, I was selling advertising in Seattle, which ended up being the end of my career. Uh, and one of the things that I decided that I was going to do was I was going to do networking. So I had four networking groups a week that I attended. And I drummed up some business from it and I sold some advertising from it. So the networking part of it actually worked. Uh, but one day in uh, February, I decided that I was, rather than do my spiel about the radio station, I did a spiel about, uh, about singing Valentine's. You know, in my other life, I'm, I'm a barbershop and we have singing Valentine's and it's a way to embarrass your best your, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever, and had a lot of fun with it. So I stood up in the first meeting and I gave that spiel. And across the room to me was a really uh, good friend of mine, Tom Melberg. And uh, I got up and I sat down and went around the room. And uh, the next day I decided that that networking group, I would do the same thing. And this time Tom was sitting right exactly next to me. We were sitting together. I got up and talked about barbershop. I sat down, he got up and, and did whatever he, whatever he was going to do, went all the way around the room. The third meeting, he was across the room from me. And I got up and I said it again. And uh, everything was fine. The fourth meeting, Tom was sitting across from me at the, uh, uh, at the table. I stood up and talked about singing Valentine's. And as I was sitting down, Tom looked at me and said, you sing? That's how long it takes to penetrate this thing up here to where people are actually paying attention to it. So the, the ability to reach a lot of people. So radio has limited reach because it's not as powerful. It doesn't attract as many people. And radio has become a uh, radio has become basically just a car listening thing. So only when people are in the car. So you need to you need to go after that. And then you have to figure out how much frequency it takes for them to hear it three times. Once they've heard it three times, we all make a, we make a decision. Yes, I want the product. I'm gonna buy the tickets right now. I can't wait to get to this barbershop show. No, I hate barbershop. I'll never go to barbershop. I'll never buy it. You can't, you can't convert that person through advertising. You might be able to convert them, but not through advertising. Or, gee, that sounds interesting. I've never been, maybe I'll go. So you're advertising for yeses and maybes, but you've got to somehow drill through and get to at least three messages before it penetrates. My example, it took him on the, it was the fourth day of hearing it, that it finally dawned on him what I was talking about. Tom later joined Federal Way, still sings with him, also sings with Northwest Sound. Uh, at least he was. And... Uh, but that's a little demonstration of reach and frequency. Also, it demonstrates uh, space repetition because he heard it, walked away from it, went to the next meeting, heard it again, walked away from it. Next meeting, walked away from it. Fourth meeting, after he'd heard it three times, it finally dawned on him what the heck I was talking about. And that's, that's pretty typical. And that's what you're striving for. Uh, most media outlets, can tell you how many it takes to reach somebody three times. 
And most media will tell you more than you actually need, but <laughs> that's okay. They're in the business of, of selling. So uh, when a person hears a message three times, they make one of three decisions. If you have a strong call to action, sometime within the next four times they hear the message, if you have a strong call to action, they will, uh, they, they're more apt to act on their decision that they had made previously. In the case of the networking thing, Tom Melberg, after the fourth time, uh, you know, as he said, so you sing, we sat outside, he said, I sing. I said, why don't you come to Federal Way and, and try it out? We have a lot of fun. And uh, he showed up and uh, became a member and is a heck of a base. And, uh, but it took that long, but notice it was on the fourth day. So sometime within the next four repetitions of the message, you can act, somebody will act on their decision. Does it, on Go ahead. about repetition, do these messages have to all be the same message or are you varying your message a little bit? Um, I didn't go into, I, and that's a whole different, that's a whole different uh, workshop, but ultimately you want to be consistent. You want to be, con you want to be concise and you want to be, uh, you, you want to, you, you want to hammer home the same information over and over and over again. Uh, if you change it, uh, then you need to structure whatever your message is with your name first, the chapter name. In a 30 second spot, you want your name in there twice. Okay. In a 60 second spot, you want it in there at least three times. Uh, but keep the message consistent because you can't get a call to action if you keep changing it. You know, if you're advertising for membership, you're telling them what a great chapter you are and you are encouraging them, go to the phone right now, call this number because our chapter is waiting for you. That's a call to action. You got to do something about it. Let's see, we went yes, no, maybe, maybe yeses. Uh, the review situation, advertising goal is to inform, persuade and remind. Uh, you need to know the basic learning styles and apply them and reach in frequency. And the next slide is talking about media math. Greg, I, I would say something. If in my Rotary Club, we happen to have a guy who know is just the first time he's heard it and he'll go and get the four no's um, instead of just the, the your four messages. So yeah. if you happen to have, be lucky enough to have somebody like that, then some of those no's will come around and, and be a yes. Yeah, it's um, it's long been long been uh, discussed in barbershop circles that uh, you know the, the the best way to get a member is to invite them, pick them up, drive them there, uh, and make sure that the chapter is prepared to receive them as members. And you can do conversion, but just uh, just buying a radio ad and somebody hears it four times. And if they've said no within the first three, that's not going to convert them to what you're doing. Uh, it is that, you know, that's exactly what you're talking about. You need the, you need the person who can uh, add Gens. Shoot. I think he's got 50, uh, 50, um, 50, in, 50 memberships. I think, I think he's a man of, man of note 50 times or something like that. Wow. Or thirty times, uh, he's he's just a machine on getting members, uh, and uh, so if you've got somebody like that that's really charged up and not afraid to go out and do it, uh, I think in terms of advertising uh, more for audience than I do for members. But there's nothing wrong with members. Uh, there was a time when uh, businesses advertised for employees. In print, they have actually shifted over to radio because they're finding radio is more effective and uh, and less expensive to them in print. Uh, print is a disaster right now. And to, to be quite candid, uh, unless you can figure out a way to partner with a print outlet, uh, their price, prices have gone sky high and, they're, and they continue to lose, uh, lose subscribers. And it's really sad. 
But media, uh, media matching is, is the slide that I'm on right now. Media matching is just determining who your primary user is and try and understand their age, their gender, uh, their occupation, uh, household, uh, a household, if the household holds children under the age of 12, they're gonna be harder to get because they don't have as much spendable income. So it's after uh, when, the, when the kid turns 13, the parents go, whoa, we can do something. Uh, I don't know if that's true. Uh, so you wanna take a look at it. When I was in broadcasting, uh, when I started off, I was a disc jockey and later became a program director. And we took, we took, um, we took matching our audience to our format very strongly. And I had all of the, all of the announcers go through magazines and find a picture of the ideal uh, listener for us. Happened to be a 35 year old female uh, who had two kids whose husband uh, probably work at Hanford. Uh, this was in Tri-Cities uh, and probably bringing in pretty good bucks. And that was, the, that was the person through all of our statistics that we found out that's what it was. So we took this picture of a 35 year old model <laughs> somewhere and we posted it on the microphone at the radio station and everybody talked to the picture. It's still underway now. The eye is surely past the lap. <laughs> Hello. Uh, and so that's who my, every one of my announcers talked to that picture. Because it, we're not talking to the masses, we're actually talking to an individual. And when we're, when we're broadcasting. So that's all about it. You need to understand. And that goes back to marketing in general. You need to understand your product and who uses it and what place it holds in their hearts. And you need to know uh, how to reach that individual that you're talking to. Radio stations and television stations can give you statistics. Just a second, Jeff. Can give you statistics. Uh, I don't know if Arbitron still exists because I've been out of this since 2010, but they have, they have statistics and they can tell you who listens when and how, how often and what hours they listen. Okay, Jeff, question. Well, in thinking about where you're talking about matching, um, maybe Dennis can say how their graph is going down in age, or maybe uh, Noah can say how he was attracted, because I'm sure he's younger than most of us here. Okay, Dennis, give it a shot. Well, I just, we've been blessed. Um, the last four or five years with having younger directors. And those directors have attracted um, basically younger people. Um, they see us at uh, when we perform at, at the Youth Barbershop Festival. Um, and we're, of course, in, in front of kids. They see us when they go out in the community. And um, when you see a youthful director up there directing guys that, that now vary in age from 18 to 85, and but it's an average age going down. It becomes more attractive to that person who says, maybe I can do that. And uh, we always give out that invitation. You know, we're not out there beating people's heads, but we say, look, you know, we, we rehearse on Tuesday nights, come give us a try. Okay. It, it's been that youthful director, I think, out there that yeah. really has helped us tremendously. Uh, I, I and I interrupted. I didn't mean to. Noah, how did you become a barber shopper? Hey, so uh, I wasn't. It was this year. Earlier this year, I was. Um, I was just thinking to myself. I haven't sang in a long time. You know, it's been a decade, over a decade since I got out of high school. I used to sing in high school, um, and I just went on Google and googled uh, men's singing group near me, and it was probably the first one on the Google search that I saw, I clicked on it, um, looked around the website a little bit, and I decided to go down. And I think um, if you don't have a website for your group, you definitely need one. And, um, and I would definitely curate that um, more, to, more towards a younger group. Um, I also like the idea of the jingle too, um, just to get people out there. And I think that just an online presence really helps out a lot 
for a younger group, for sure. Exactly, and uh, and that's part of that's part of media matching. If you are looking for a, you know, if you're if you're recruiting for members, and you want to skew younger, you need to have a fairly hip website that's up to date. Now, way back in February, I guess it was. Uh, I did I did one of these and uh, I had poked around on everybody's website. And this was 2022 and I noticed that some of them hadn't been updated since 2019. That does not help at all. Uh, there was one that hadn't been updated until 2018. So basically they're paying for uh, they're paying for a website and they're paying for hosting and they're paying for the URL and all this kind of stuff. And it's just sitting there not helping at all. Uh, and so if that's what you're recruiting for, then you, you, you need to have all of those little ducks in a row so that when somebody gets there, uh, in terms of recruiting members, uh, I had two really, really bad, you know, almost three really, really bad uh, experiences with uh, guest nights. So I, can, I convinced uh, Harmony Kings to drop the idea of guest nights, spend some time getting organized to greet guests and uh, basically said every Tuesday night was guest night. We put a page on our website that said, here's what you can expect as a guest. You can expect to have music put in your hand. You're going to find a place on the risers and we're going to help you. Uh, we're going to, we're going to help you be successful and have a fun night of singing. We developed a slogan. Come for the singing, stay for the cookies. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was amazing how many people uh, were, were attracted and we were never overwhelmed. It wasn't like we had 30 guests all of a sudden, we'd have one or two. We also worked with the chapter on how to greet guests so they don't feel like they're being ganged up. So there's two, two elements there. That uh, that I think is is really important. Just a second, Sid. I see you. Uh, is a don't overwhelm the person, and b don't leave them standing there while you say, "Well, I'll try and go find somebody, and I'll see what's going on." Because I, I don't, and I don't know where the guest books are. I can't help you. Uh, that's the the other side. So you have to actually prepare your chapter in order to greet people. Uh, that are uh, that are coming in, which is taken off as advertising, but that's okay because I think this is important. Uh, Sid, go ahead. Uh, yeah, on that topic, I know I've talked to our um, our recruiting and membership, which is two different people, um, about that specific subject. If you look at, uh, I'm, I'm I'm a retired Air Force, so if you look at the military recruiting, when you you all seen it, you've all seen it at the state fair. You've all ran across a military recruiter at some time. And what they show you is what's cool. Here, check this out. Do some pull-ups. Um, um, you know, uh, look at this gun. Look at this tank. Look at this whatever they happen to drag to the fair, whether it's a jet, a helicopter, whatever. It's all the cool stuff. And they don't talk to you about the long hours, the crappy conditions and stuff, or any, any kind of cost stuff. They talk about what's cool and so uh, in line with what greg's saying we try to talk about what's cool in barbershop which is of course we try to get them to ring a chord but by the time the night's over just stand in a quartet and ring a chord by the time they leave at least once if not twice if the new guests because that's what's cool that's that's barbershop compared to any other singing like uh you know like noah talked about he's a singer but What's cool about what's cool about barbershop? What's different about barbershop? It's ringing that chord. Make sure because we, I personally have seen um, a few members overwhelm a guest with a lot of minutia, and it's kind of I maybe that scared them away. I don't know, but they didn't come back. So it's I think it's crucial to just focus on what's cool. That's that's what I wanted to say about that. So well, that and and this is actually part of this is part of your marketing and part of your advertising is to try and get out there. When I first started with Harmony Kings, they had a website that was designed specifically for new members. And when I when I arrived, I asked them how many new members they've gotten from this, uh, all the work that they put into it. And uh, they said none. 
And I said, well, then I want to change. Uh, I want to change the website because obviously that's not working. So let's try something else. So I designed uh, with the help of Sue Middleton uh, in, in Federal Way, uh, who has done a lot of stuff. I designed with her a, uh, a website, which basically was, here's what we do. And I listed all the places that we sang. The first year I was president, we sang 32 shows in 12 months. The chapter was really active. And uh, so we had action pictures of us in front of, in front of different people and we tried to make it look cool. And we had a page for uh, membership. Wasn't the entire website. The website was designed to talk about all the stuff that we do, money that we raise for the community and stuff like that. But there was a page that said, here's what you can expect as a, uh, as a visitor. And it must have worked because within the first year, I had a, uh, a goal of six new members for that year. And we ended up with seven. So something happened and something, something worked, but the chapters need to, in recruiting, you need to sit down and have a target number. We want four new members before the year is over and get everybody working in the same thing. So, um, and I could go on and on and on and I don't wanna do that. And then finally on the, uh, the end of this, I just gave some in information on your message. Uh, must be clear, must be concise, must be consistent, must be compelling, must be true, must include a call to action, and must be well thought out. And then I showed you the fable of the three, the three retailers, and uh, and so you do need to think about it. And that really is a whole different. Um, that that's a whole different workshop on how to do that. Uh, and perhaps I will do one on copywriting. I don't know how many people would come, but uh, that, that didn't work. So what I wanna do next is figure out my view. <laughs> okay, I'm going to bring up a PowerPoint and this is for discussion. And I'm not sure that I'm gonna actually be able to um, see you when I go full screen. Let's see what I can do here. Okay, well, obviously that is not how to do it. Oh, isn't that interesting? I don't have it up at all. <laughs> Okay, now yeah. what I'm going to do is I'll pull it up on my end. So, uh, this will take a second here. Okay. Let's see if I can see you guys and minimize this. So uh, I'll have to, I'll send you a, uh, a PDF of this PowerPoint later. Uh, but basically it's, it's dollar stretcher ideas. And uh, is anybody in the group uh, ever purchased paid for advertising for their, for an event or members or anything like that? Purchased what kind of advertising? Just any kind of advertising that was purchased. Yeah. Okay. Boise has uh, Bridgetown Sound. Have you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. West Coast course. Uh, was it successful? So I'll just lead off and say I I did some Facebook ads, and you can target the market, and you know some of those things sound pretty good. Like that's just who I want, and um, with the budget that we had. And, it, you know, I think I took three or four weeks and it, it didn't do much. Okay. It, that's how to do it better. But I, there wasn't enough budget and I wasn't good enough at it for targeting. So it didn't do much, but it kind of got my uh, feet wet. OK, uh, I pay for uh, who's uh, there you are. Hello. Hello. I have a question for Jeff. Um, did you try um, 
advertise on Facebook through like um, neighborhood groups or anything? And if so, like what did um, what difference did uh, Facebook advertising make? Um, the answer is the easy way into Facebook. They want you to boost. So I boosted uh, uh, something. It was an event we were going to do, and I boosted it. And I think if you talk to any Facebook advertiser, they'll tell you that's a waste of money. And I, I think I experienced that because it really doesn't get out enough. You don't have enough control of targeting. Um, and what you mentioned, that other option there, Noah, was is probably a better way to go. But I didn't you know, know enough to take advantage of that. So. So, so let me ask you, how many uh, likes or followers does your Facebook page have? I can't tell you. It's I'm not working it right now, and okay. I'm kind of going from memory. That uh, um, that has a lot to to, to do with it because if you only have 400 people that uh, that are following you, uh, then what you have to do is engage your membership to also put it up on their um, on right. their wall uh, and get them to share and get them to send it out. So uh, I have 1500, uh, 1500 followers on Facebook. Why? I don't know. I just kept asking them and they kept saying, okay. Uh, but I posted, uh, I posted something on Facebook about uh, the social media uh, event that, uh, that Amy Rose did. And that looped around to one of my, one of the people that followed me, who happened to know happened to know a uh, sweet ad chapter up in BC uh, that needed that they thought this would be good, and they contacted me, and I had two of their members uh, join us on one of these meetings. So you just never know. Yeah. Uh, I went out on my personal space and I targeted on purpose barbershoppers. So I've never met Gene, but he and I are friends on Facebook. Right. Uh, I've never met uh, um, Tim Trax, but I'm friends with Tim on Facebook. He wouldn't know me if I came up and bid him, but uh, the information uh, is getting out there. And obviously with 1500 members, not all of them are barbershoppers, but some of them are. And um, so when I was doing stuff for Federal Way on their Facebook page, I also was doing stuff on my Facebook page and uh, our director who had 1200 followers, she was, she was duplicating it on that and it helped. But once again, it's hard to target regionally because uh, I have Facebook friends in uh, Florida that uh, are barbershoppers, but they would never probably ever come to our show, anything like that. Uh, paid advertising is tricky and there are some ways that you can, <laughs> try and um, uh, there are some ways that you can uh, try and stretch your money. So uh, print is always a big expense, right? By the way, right now I can't see anybody. So if you write, jot down your questions and I'll come back in a second. Um, you got tickets, you got posters. I don't know if you've ever printed lobby cards uh, to promote your stuff. But one thing that you can do is go to your printer, find a printer, ask them to be your official printer for your your targets and or for your tickets. And what you would like to do is include their logo on the on the printing and exchange that for a free upgrade to maybe better paper or maybe adding color or offer the printer a logo on your poster or lobby card to try and reduce costs. You, th that's a visual way of getting to a potential uh, audience member. And it's a way to, you can sort of kind of uh, take a look and create a partnership with the printer that will extend, it will stretch your budget in whatever you're doing. Radio, your show is a product of value. So why not consider a small purchase on a local radio station, purchase drive time and ask the station to match your schedule with public service announcements. That would at least uh, uh, double the amount of impact that you have. Uh, there is a tendency of going in and asking for lower rates to buy frequency. 
But really, to get more bang for your buck, you need to buy the station's better times, which are always more expensive. If the station consents to match your schedule with PSAs, you have effectively cut your ad price in half. And that makes it a little bit easier to deal with. So any comments on that? I don't want, don't want to get too far ahead of you. Make sense? Yeah, it does. No. Maybe just a simple poll. I, I agree with what was said earlier that I, I only listen to the radio in the car. And I don't know about you guys. If Is that a place that you would receive a message? Maybe you listen, we listen to the same station each day and we're driving somewhere each day and you hear the barbershop ad four times. Are you going to make a decision or is it just too random and you're punching the buttons when that when an ad comes on, you go to the next station and go to the next station? What, go ahead, Dennis. What the courts do with, with radio advertising is we, we've identified the, the three best stations in Boise. We know who, the, the, who they listen to and we buy drive time uh, advertising. Just going into work, coming home, that's it. Uh, nothing during the day doesn't make any difference. And uh, that has helped us out quite a bit with shows and things and with the TV advertising. Yeah, uh, drive times traditionally were six to 10 and three to seven. I think that some of these stations because of longer commute times, I think some of the stations have uh, extended drive time earlier to like 5 a.m. But you want it, you want the most amount of ears you can possibly get for your, for your ad. Uh, I'll talk about PSAs in a second. Go ahead, Sid. Um, I'd like Dennis to talk about some other, I believe it's free advertising we get because of relationships with our local news broadcasters um, that um, they just, out of the goodness of their heart, they do a story, but I'll let Dennis jump in there. Yeah. Um, what, <laughs> when you're using TV advertising, uh, you can develop relationships with their community advertising. Uh, we have a guy locally in that side, more for Channel 6, that helps us out with four or five minutes of uh, what are you guys doing with the upcoming concert and barbershop big with the youth and that kind of thing. He just does that for gratis. We've done that with, uh, uh, on your side, with, with uh, one of the local TV stations. They come down and, and video our um, rehearsals during the day before we had the evening. TV performances for the youth. Um, so you have to develop those relationships with those kind of people. Uh, and the best way to do it is say, look, we're buying $5,000 in ads from you. Uh, can we have some guys come down and, and do some video for us? Yeah, the, um, the importance of relationships, particularly in, uh, uh, in markets is really important. Uh, I've, 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 we, uh, we wanted to get some attention with the local station in Tri-Cities. And so we sent a quartet and we just walked in and said, yes, we have this, we have this, uh, we've recorded this message and we're thinking about buying advertising, but you know, you're a really cute little receptionist. So let us sing you something. And we did. And boy, did that open up doors because the receptionist, every time one of us walked in from, from the chapter, it was like, Oh, did you bring the other three? Did you bring the other three? Uh, so it's absolutely amazing. Uh, what you can do and how you can you can build relationships. Now, I will say the difference between the difference between a Olympia Washington radio station and a Seattle radio station is that in Seattle you were going to walk through three layers of bulletproof glass and you're going to have a hard time getting in and uh, they, they are really nervous about any stranger that shows up and that. Uh, that barrier, that physical barrier has dis distracted a whole lot of people from, from going forward with what they're doing. But in Olympia, you just walk in and say hi, and you talk to the receptionist, and you build a relationship, and you talk to one of the disc jockeys, you talk to the program director. Uh, if you want to know key individuals, there are, uh, there are organizations in every state and, um, and province which are broadcasting associations of some kind. So in Idaho, it's the Idaho, uh, the Idaho Broadcasting Association. In Washington, it's the Washington State Adver uh, Washington State. It's uh, 
It's been a while. Uh, but WSAB, Washington State Association of Broadcasters, uh, in Canada and in Montana, there are these. And if you get to their website, a lot of them will publish a, uh, a catalog of their uh, of every station that's a member of their organization. And from that, you can find out the program director, you can find out the sales manager, uh, you can find out um, you can find out who the key people are. Uh, the issue with public service, because I, I would normally recommend you find the public service director, but with deregulation in uh, the 1980s, thanks to President Reagan and stuff like that, there are a few things that went away. Uh, radio stations used to have to commit to a number of public service announcements that they did uh, every week. I remember that we promised 107, uh, but every year we had to prove that we had actually done 107 PSAs that week. With deregulations, public, rela uh, public service announcements were no longer required and a lot of radio stations dump, uh, dumped them. A lot of radio stations wanted to have the, the concept that they were uh, community oriented and they were doing public service announcements and they would accept them from, from 501c3 organizations and stuff like that. The, what they failed to tell them is that they're gonna run them between two and 3 a.m. and they run all of them. And so they can say, look at us, we're doing public service announcements, but it's not helping you at all. So th that's part of the part of the idea of, of purchasing advertising. Now, not everybody's got five grand or 500. Uh, so another way of stretching your dollar is find one of your sponsors, go to the sponsor and say, uh, we've got an event coming up. We're going to be advertising on XYZ radio station. And uh, we have we've ponied up five hundred dollars for this. If we include your name on our ad, would you be interested in helping us with it so that we can spread the word a little bit faster and maybe pon and have you uh, participate with five hundred dollars and give them part of your ad? Another thing that you can do with radio stations, a little bit with TV, but mostly with radio stations, and that's where my expertise is, as you can see, is that you have something of value. Your show is worth something. Your worth is uh, your your show is worth at least whatever you're charging per, per seat. So if you're charging twenty dollars, and you give the radio, you ask the radio station to uh, give you a contest and give away those tickets. You do it in pairs. So if you can say, I can have eight eight pairs of tickets for you to give away uh, the week before the event. What you're gaining in that is uh, somebody has to say. It's time to win a pair of tickets to the Boise Chordsman annual show at blah, 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 at such and such a time. So we'll take the 15th caller. Then they'll come back and they'll say, hey, congratulations to Joe Smith, who just won tickets to the Boise Chordsman annual show at the blah, blah, blah arena and, and all this kind of stuff. And if the radio station is really your friend, there's the opportunity to get a third plug by coming up this hour, we're gonna give away tickets to the Boise Courtsman show. So you can conceivably get three plugs extra by offering those tickets if they're willing to go into it. Now, it normally means that you're gonna to have to come in with a cash buy and you have to demonstrate that, uh, you have to demonstrate that there will be enough people to make it worth their while. Uh, always give them away in pairs because a single ticket, you, you're thinking, oh, well, we'll force them to buy one. Well, what happens is they get the free ticket and they don't buy one. So if you give it away in pairs, uh, it sounds like I'm getting a full prize rather than just half of a prize. And uh, the nice thing about tickets is that if nobody picks them up or nobody shows up, it only costs you the price of the tickets. And that's who you're going to do that anyway. But you got all that extra, all those extra plugs. So with a radio station, if you go in and say, uh, you know, we'd like to, we'd like to give you these tickets for giveaway, and we've got five hundred dollars to spend, and we're wondering if you can, uh, if you can match that in public service announcements, and go from there. Now, unfortunately, five hundred dollars at some radio stations will buy you three ads. Um, so having that relationship. Now, I will tell you a secret. 
January, February, and March are the two most difficult months in radio to sell advertising in. It's a great time for you guys to come in and say, we got singing Valentine's and we want to we want to talk to you about singing Valentine's. Not too long ago, uh, Northwest Sound and Federal Way Harmony Kings uh, pooled their money together. And we went and bought twelve hundred dollars worth of advertising. Uh, Federal Way put up six hundred and Northwest Sound put up six hundred. Uh, it bought us something like 15 ads. And uh, the 15 ads we split. So I got seven for Federal Way. They got seven. And I don't know what we did with the other half. But anyway, uh, so we each had, um, in fact, I think I took seven and they took eight. We each developed our own, uh, our own ads. And I approached it differently than Northwest Sound did. Uh, the guy that was handling uh, marketing for them was disappointed because he got no response from his half of the ads and i my the ads that i purchased uh sold seven uh seven say uh, seven saying us seven valentines uh, and the difference was call to action so i really had that so that's another way that you can stretch it you can do the same thing with television uh, but you can stretch your dollars and if you're if you're purchasing in radio and in television, money talks. And uh, if you have not put aside any money for your marketing person, uh, you know, in reality, there's not a whole lot that they can do. Uh, I just noticed that we have seven minutes left. Well, no, we have a little more than seven minutes left. And my conversation with Joe Ha uh, was an hour. I edited it down to um, uh, 20 minutes, and we have had a pretty good discussion, and I don't have time to show Joe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm going to put it on, I'm gonna put it on YouTube and send you send you guys a link uh, so that you can view it. Um, what he basically talked about was there were two things, and one of them got edited out altogether. So uh, he talks about auctions and how to put them together. And it's a high end of, of marketing. Uh, the way that they basically did it is they, uh, they tied in with another chapter. And uh, they started gathering up physical products for giveaway. They went out into the community and talked to businesses about donating a basket, donating something like this. They went to a bakery and asked them to donate cakes. Uh, and uh, they put together, uh, they put together a actual auction, uh, a physical auction with an auctioneer. They also had a silent auction. Uh, the dessert auction generated almost uh, almost $1,200 all by itself. People went nuts uh, for that. Uh, the first one that they did uh, Joe teamed up with a high school and they did pretty well. The next one that they did, um, they tied in with a restaurant and served um, <clears throat> beer and wine. And beer and wine really helped in the, uh, uh, in the bidding de department. Uh, but as I said, there's the second one and uh, uh, the second uh, auction that they did, uh, they generated 10 grand split between two chapters. So it can be done. Uh, the format for the evening, and Joe didn't go into a lot of this, but the format for the evening was they, uh, the second one they had a dinner. So people purchased tickets for the dinner. Uh, and then quartets would sing during the, during the meal. The chapters sang a couple of songs. So it was an entertainment thing. Uh, and then they had the silent auction and they had the actual auction. Uh, where there were a handful of baskets and gift cards and stuff like that that were auctioned off live. And then they did the, uh, did the dessert auction. And uh, it worked really well. Now, the bigger your auction, the less time you have. Uh, I asked him specifically how long to, pl uh, to plan ahead for this. And he said three months. I think probably closer to four. Uh, it's my personal 
personal take on it. You have to have it. Uh, you have to have tremendous buy-in from your ch entire chapter because it will take the entire chapter chapter to pull it off. Uh, if you can tie in with another chapter, uh, then you lighten the load for each chapter individually. Uh, and that's what he's that's what he discusses in uh, in the video, which I will send you the link to. The part he didn't discuss with was something that they tried. They stole the idea from a Sweet Adeline's organization in Wisconsin. Uh, and what they did is they did a raffle. They sent their chapter members out to gather up prizes for a raffle. They did, they got 31 prizes uh, for the raffle. And they went out and they sold raffle tickets without the, within the community. And uh, they then on their, their Tuesday night on their chapter night, they drew out seven, seven names. The people that sold the tickets went back with the prize to the household and offered to sell them additional raffle tickets and tell them that their winning ticket was going to be tossed back in the back in the thing. So they had 31 days of prizes. They had 31 days of uh, of uh, drawings is what I'm trying to say. And uh, and they were able to do that. And their first go round, and they didn't know what they were doing. And he admitted that to me. Uh, they were just guessing, but they generated uh, 2,500 bucks from that. And uh, the advantage of that was it sent community members out talking about the chapter. It sent communities in, uh, uh, it sent chapter members to businesses. It sent chapter members to friends and family. It sent chapter members door to door, uh, trying to drum up business. And they did pretty well. And he told me that uh, primarily they are, uh, they, they've already committed to do it again. Uh, and there are a lot of refinements that they have, that they have heard about. And uh, he was very generous with his time. And like I said, I thought, I thought interviewing him would take 15 minutes, maybe 20, it was an hour and a half. And, uh, but I will post it on, Facebook and I encourage you to, or not Facebook, I will post it on YouTube and send you the link and encourage you. Now on the roster, I put his name, his email address and his uh, phone number. And if any chapter is actually interested in it, uh, he would be more than happy to uh, give extra guidance on how to do it. And uh, he's very candid about what you need to do. And he can help you determine whether it's a good idea for your chapter or not. Uh, and he was, like I say, he was supposed to be here, but he's teaching a college class and there was a conflict tonight. And so he was unable to do it. So with that, any, uh, and I also put his uh, uh, chapter in there. Any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that that you wanna bring up for the good of the order? Yeah, Sid. Uh, real quick, um, I thought that was a great presentation and very educational, uh, Greg. Um, and I have a, a thought or uh, idea floating in my head, but I'll email you specifically about it because obviously you're in charge of marketing, so I don't want to put you on the spot here, but I'll uh, send you something to think about. But it's great to see uh, Noah here and the younger generation, and I'm just interested, and that's kind of what my thought is about is what engages them because I know Facebook is for grandmas and people over 40 anymore so it's kind of maybe a, a suggestion of how to engage or at least a thought of how to engage them in the future and and maybe we could bring that up at contests with the younger guys and bring some ideas have them tell us how do you engage uh, with each other because because there's two specific things you know my kids engage with their grandparents on Facebook and they engage with their peers on other things. So I think that's something we should probably explore a little bit. So. And I, we are now at the seven minute mark according to my calculations. And so uh, 
we uh, we pretty much come to because I wasn't able to show Joe's thing. Uh, we pretty much come to the end. But any observations? Uh, any other? Any other things? Yeah, Jeff. Well, I'd hate to throw cold water on the auction idea, but it's a lot of work and gathering those silent items is really a lot of work and it takes everybody and so i'm going back to my rotary experience we did six years of that we got up to 60 grand and we just we had auction burnout and many people who are your potential butts and seats and will come to your show and they're just tired of auctions and i don't know if that's still the thing but we gave it up a couple years ago and the the committee was burned out and Wow, it was just a lot of work. What, what you will hear from Joe on the video is 10 things to take into consideration before you even consider doing an auction. Some chapters can, some, some chapters can't. You are right. Manpower is, yeah. is really, really tough. Now, for our particular audience, uh, it may be in, in your particular uh, community, it may be a new thing and it, may, it might yeah. generate some excitement, but there is a point, you know, there's a point of no return. Um, Federal Way uh, do their auctions uh, once a year and they, they change it around. And uh, if now, who knows, uh, if interest wanes, obviously they will drop the thing, but then we've had basically three years of not doing anything. And so that becomes a that becomes an issue. So whether it works or not, I don't know. But you're right. The time commitment, and that's the first thing that you have to do, is your board and your membership actually willing to put in the time to pull it off? If they're not, abandon the idea and don't do it, because it is the top echelon of uh, a promotional activity. But on the other hand. If you got a chance of putting an extra two thousand or five thousand dollars in your operating budget for your chapter, is it worth at least trying one time? Yeah. So, uh, and so I'm with you on that. I had a time is it? I had a uh, situation where my board wanted to do a um, food uh, food vending thing at the US Open that took place in Tacoma. And I'm of the opinion that I'm in a singing organization. I'm not, I don't have a food handler's card. That's not my deal. I don't wanna do that. Um, but the board was insistent that they were going to do it. So basically when we voted on it, I said, I expect every person that voted for this will participate. And they did, and we generated eighty five hundred dollars oh. from that event, which became a rainy day fund. We we took that money and we stuck it away. And uh, when I left, it was eighty. It was about nine thousand dollars or uh, ninety five hundred something. We put in like an, another thousand. Uh, but I forced the board to put their money where their mouth is, and I did not attend, but they did. And I had to apologize <laughs> at the meeting after the event and say, Look, you guys were right. I was wrong. But that's what this is all about. You voted on it. I just wanted to make sure that you didn't vote on it and cop out. Yeah. I voted against it. I'm not going to be there. Good luck. Uh, so I was wrong and I had to admit it. But, um, you know, we got to keep our chapters going. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done in order to do that. And, you know, if you're chapters down to like uh gentlemen of fortune is down to like 10 you know this was a huge chorus when i joined um i will tell you that well it's not a total secret i don't think just did the august uh the august membership of the evergreen district when i joined there were about 1800 members in the evergreen district the last one we were at 800. Oh my gosh. So we've lost it through all kinds of different things. COVID, uh, upset about uh, Harmony uh, Foundation, upset about 
everyone in harmony. I mean, anything that you can find that to, to tick somebody off, there's somebody that got ticked off. And so uh, as a, and part of what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help people get, get, the, get members back or increase their membership or whatever, uh, because we need healthy chapters. And I always ask the question, if the, if the society folded tomorrow, and if the Evergreen District folded the day after, would I have a chapter to go sing with? And I can sing without the, without the society. I can sing without the district. There's a lot of stuff that you lose uh, without having those, those entities. But would I still have a place to sing? And some of the chapters, it's really scary. Going, it, they've got to find people. They got to find people. Uh, I'm going to close with um, thank you for being here. If anybody wants to do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, or do a Zoom meeting with your chapters on a chapter night, I am currently not singing in a chapter. I have COVID concerns with my wife, and uh, so I'm doing a little quartetting. Uh, and but I'm not currently singing, so I, I don't have a chapter night uh, as of right now. So if a chapter would like to get together and do a Zoom uh, and run any of this down, or if you want a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, please contact me. The Evergreen District has provided me with um, with a Zoom account, and I appreciate that. And uh, I want to make it work for us. So with that, it is 7:30. And I want to keep my promise of getting out on time so you are free to move about the cabin. Thank you, Greg. Thanks, Thank Greg. You. Great job. Thanks, Greg. Thank you.